Mid-2008 saw the launch of ATI's venerable HD4000 series with the Radeon HD4870 and HD 4850. Both cards became fantastic mid-range options thanks to their great performance for the price. However, while the HD 4870 performed very well given its price bracket, it was still no match for Nvidia's GT200 monster, the GTX 280. So what happens when you grab another one for some crossfire fun? Let's find out. Getting right into the card specs, it's using the RV770 XT GPU which sports 800 shading units and is clocked at a fast 750 MHz. Memory-wise, we have 512MB of GDDR5 clocked at 900MHz, which is all running on a 256-bit bus for 115GB per second of total memory bandwidth. The TDP comes in at 150 watts, and the card requires two 6-pin PET connectors to keep it fed with power. To briefly overview the HD 4870's history, first let's talk about the improvements it has over its predecessor, the HD 3870. First off, RV770 brought way more raw execution resources to the table, with 800 shading units rather than 320 found in RV670. Next, ATI fixed Terrascale's poor anti-aliasing performance by moving AA Resolve to the ROPS rather than the shader hardware, which improved shader performance and greatly reduced the performance hit with anti-aliasing enabled. Along with this, the 4870 used fast GDDR5 memory, which would provide twice the memory bandwidth over GDDR4 at the same clock. This would also make the 4870 the very first graphics card to make use of GDDR5 VRAM. All of these improvements were certainly a recipe for success, and they definitely delivered as the $300 HD 4870 offered performance equivalent to Nvidia's GTX 260, which was $400 at the time. As for the HD 4850, it was a slightly cost-cut version of the HD 4870 which used cheaper GDDR3 memory and had lower core clocks as well. Even so, the card offered incredible value thanks to its $200 price tag, outperforming Nvidia's 9800 GTX Plus at the same price. ATI had pretty much fully taken over the mid-range at this point with their HD 4800 cards, but they didn't have a card to compete in the high end against the monstrous GTX 280. Or not yet at least. So what was their solution? Enter ATI's multi-GPU strategy. Just grab another 4870 and a compatible motherboard and you're off to the races. That sounds pretty simple and straightforward on paper, and well, in practice it kind of was. The only potential limiting factors was game compatibility as well as scaling, and of course, high power consumption, which is something we'll be putting to the test a little later. Before we get into some benchmarks, let's have a look around the cards we'll be testing today. These cards were purchased in a lot of two for $24, and they were kept in okay shape, if a little beat up from use. Both cards are Mac editions, which are using the standard reference cooler and PCB. Being Mac editions, they have the memory clock slightly lower at 850 MHz, so I used a modded BIOS on both cards which raises the memory clocks to reference speeds and also has a more aggressive fan profile, as these cards did run quite toasty with a stock one. For the setup, I'll be using the regular test bed, and it's got a Gigabyte Z77X UD5H motherboard along with the 3770K overclocked to 4.4 GHz and 16 GB of DDR3. All of the other specs along with the drivers will be on screen. Also, for the benchmarks, I decided to include results from a single HD 4870 as well as numbers from my HD 4850 just for fun. That being said, let's now dig into some testing. Starting off with the older games, we have Crisis, and I used the built-in benchmark with 1080p and the high preset with textures set to medium to keep within our 512MB VRAM limit. Here we can see the single 4870 achieved 39 frames per second on average, with some alright 1 and 0.1% lows. Moving on to the 2 in Crossfire, we can see a good 59% improvement to average frame rates. Certainly not perfect scaling, but still good. Now, as to be expected, the frame times haven't improved by much, as I observed a decent amount of micro stutter on the Crossfire setup. Still, though, this is a pretty good result. Next is the original Witcher, and I used the opening cutscene to get our numbers, as it's demanding and repeatable. I did crank the settings as I used 1080p with the high preset with 16x AF and no AA. The single 4870 got 40 frames per second on average, and using two cards we saw that jump 80% to 72 FPS. Now the frame times look pretty bad on all of the cards, but this is normal during the opening cutscene and won't be felt in regular gameplay. Far Cry 2 is up next, and using the built-in benchmark in 1080p with the very high preset in DX9 mode, the single 4870 averaged 49 frames per second with some excellent frame times to boot. Running two cards, we saw a 74% jump to 85 FPS, pretty great scaling overall. 
Now the frame times do suffer a bit on the multi GPU setup as shown in the 0.1% lows, but even so the cards put down some impressive numbers here. Also, the 4850 is holding its own against the 4870. I'm assuming this game doesn't poke at its weaknesses as much as the other titles. Next game up is Stalker Call of Pripyat, and I ran the standalone benchmarking utility with 1080p in the medium preset with DX10, enhanced full dynamic lighting, and no AA. The single card averaged 51 frames per second, and in crossfire averages jumped 73% to 88 FPS. Surprisingly, 1% lows also saw a good jump of 68%, although 0.1% lows didn't improve much as to be expected. Overall, Crossfire really improved the experience here. Also, looks like the cutbacks to the memory and GPU speeds are hitting the 4850 pretty hard in this game. Just Cause 2 is next, and I used the built-in benchmark with 1080p in the high settings with 16x AF. The single card averaged 50 frames per second, and we saw a 68% jump to average frame rates with a pack of 4870s. It's also interesting to note that the 4850 isn't too far behind its bigger brother in this game. Now you're probably looking at the 1 and 0.1% lows and wondering, what the heck happened? And to be honest, I'm asking the same question. All of the cards experienced terrible micro stutter in this game, and upon retesting in Windows 10 I saw far better numbers. Not too sure what was going on with Windows 7 here. The last game up is Tomb Raider, and using the built-in benchmark in 1080p with the high preset, the single card saw 32 frames per second on average. Moving on to two cards in Crossfire, we saw a great 81% jump to 58 FPS, with the frame times improving a little bit, but not much. Overall, the game was a great experience on the two 4870s, being a huge improvement over a single card. Unfortunately, the 4850 is falling below playable frame rates at these settings. For a synthetic test, I ran 3D Mark Vantage on all of the cards with the performance preset. Now taking a look at the charts, we're only seeing about a 70% uplift on the GPU score when running Crossfire, which I wasn't expecting from a synthetic test. The 4850 fell pretty far behind the 4870, being 22% slower on the GPU score. There's not much else to say as these results are pretty in line of what we've already seen in the game tests. To round things off, I measured power draw on the setups. To do this, I loaded up Tomb Raider's built-in benchmark with the same settings as before and measured total system power consumption. Now these numbers were taken directly from the wall and do not factor in PSU efficiency. The single 4870 comes in at 228 watts, with the 4850 consuming 14% less power at 197 watts due to the lower clocks and GDDR3 memory. Pretty sure this is no surprise, but the pack of Radeons are quite the power hog, consuming a cool 370 watts, which is 62% higher than a single card. You better have a pretty beefy PSU to run these cards, as they definitely love the juice. In summary, I'm pretty impressed with the performance of ATI's Crossfire with the HD 4870. Sure, you're very unlikely to see any performance improvement in games released outside of the driver window, but still, the scaling in the titles that I did test were pretty great, with some minor hits to frame times of course. It really goes to show that, at least with the HD 4870, ATI's Crossfire strategy really was a viable option for the high end, as even in reviews of the time they cited Crossfire 4870 seeing better performance across the board over Nvidia's GTX 280, while being $50 cheaper as well. Taking into consideration some of the issues with Crossfire, it may not have seemed that appealing, but as far as raw performance goes, I'm pretty satisfied with the HD 4870 and Crossfire. Anyhow, that'll be the end of this video. Thank you all for watching like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.